right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the first edition of the College Wrestling Show uh, for the School of Wrestling, um, where we dive into everything that's kind of going on in, in college wrestling and and uh, fill you in and, and kind of follow the sport. So it is Wednesday, October 23rd, and today I'm joined by a three-time Wisconsin State champ and a three-time Division One All-American for the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and currently the new owner and operator of the complete wrestler, um, Eric Barnett. Thanks for Eric. having me. Excited to be here. Eric, what's up? How's uh, Northeast Wisconsin treating you today? It's good. It's good. It's a beautiful place. Um, yeah, I love it. Love it up here. Good to be back home and and uh, helping my environment. Um helping it grow and being a resource. So it's uh, no complaints up here. Yeah. So uh, before we get into some of the college wrestling stuff, so fill us in, how has your, uh, you, you've transitioned now from athlete to now coach and uh, how's that been going? And, and uh, yeah, how, what can you tell us about your, your program? Yeah, no, it's been good. Um, being able to feed into uh, the kids um, has been, you know, really, really cool. Uh, the transition's been good. Um, body doesn't hurt as bad anymore, so that's pretty nice. Um, been scrapping a little bit here lately, uh, training training a, a kid, so um, pretty heavily. Uh, so that's been been nice to get my little fix in. Um, been you know grinding and everything, but yeah, giving giving back to the the kids that come to club, and you know it's been really good to kind of instill some of the mm -hmm. the messages I, I've learned along the way through, you know, high school and college to um, feed back into them. You know, I can, anybody can, you know, teach technique. Um, but I want to, my, my big thing with being the complete wrestler is giving back with the mental side of the sport. And, and if we can control the mentals, that's, you know, controlling everything and allowing ourselves an opportunity, you know, in uh, February and March to be competing for, for our titles. So, no, it's been really good. Um, you know, I'm very blessed to, to have the opportunity to to be able to do this and and lead a community in into battle. Yeah, that sounds uh sounds good. You said that you you're not as sore, but you know, recently I just uh, I just opened a facility for the school of wrestling, and nice. I've been wrestling a lot, and my body is not. Uh, without being pretty sore. So yeah, yep. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny once you get, well, one with coaching, doing a lot of working out, you start to train more than you would train as an athlete sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I'm playing catch up, but once I, I feel like in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll feel, uh, go back to, uh, normal. Yep. I'm right there, right there with you. I'm training, uh, kid from lives out or lived out in Montana taking a gap year before he goes to college been training him he's staying with me and we've been scrapping every day um and then going and rolling around at practices too so yeah to your point I'm putting in two and a half three hours every day on the mat I'm like man I don't know last time I put three hours in on a wrestling mat um in a day so yeah my body my body's feeling it but luckily I don't have to go compete or anything i can keep putting my body in the line so it's nice yeah well you know speaking of we're going to be talking about college wrestling but you know um i think what you just mentioned so the you're training somebody who's in a gap year between high school and college and yep. you know there's been a lot of talk um throughout the summer and off season a couple of videos went viral about uh kids taking gap years between eighth grade and high school mm -hmm. and my thought was always I don't think it's as productive of a gap year as a gap year from high school to college would be because, you know, from high school to college, you're much more mature. You're much more um, goal oriented. You, you've got a maturity about you that you right. know, one, one year between, you know, a lot of kids that go to college, they end up taking a gap year. They call it a redshirt year, but right. they lose a year of development inside of a collegiate wrestling room. Right. But, so, yeah. How did how did it come to be that your your this little gap year kind of happened? Yeah. Yeah. So his name's uh, Tegan Vasquez. Uh, wrestled up in uh, Northwest Montana. Four time state champ out there. 
um, and was kind of a, a late bloomer. Um, you know, did really well in Montana, um, but not from a super populated part. Um, up in Kalispell, I think their population is like 30,000 in the next closest town um, with some good sizes, you know, a two hour drive away. Um, not a ton of opportunity up there for him. Um, but went to postseason nationals, won postseason nationals, and he's kind of just, you know, trying to find his way right now. Um, you know, division one talent, uh, really, really good kid and really tough kid. Um, but yeah, got connected with him just with me traveling around doing camps, uh, got connected up there and been out there every summer and been rolling with him. And uh, he asked if he could stay out with me for, for a few months and have me train him. So as he's taking the gap year, we're just working together, um, working out every day, uh, training him. Um, and, and to your point, I mean, he's he's at a point in the gap year between, you know, high school and college where he's physically um, more ready to to absorb the training than if, you know, a, as a kid, uh, you know, from eighth grade to, to become a freshman in high school, you know, there's there's not much different there. Um, in terms of his, you know, mental ability and, and his um, ability to learn, you know, is a lot higher now. Um, and he knows, you know, very independent kid. Um, he knows what he needs to do to become a better wrestler. So, yeah, cool opportunity for me as a coach to um, develop a high level kid, um, good kid and, and good opportunity for him to learn from me He's a lightweight uh, will be a, probably a 33 pounder in college. Um, and good opportunity for both of us to kind of work together, pick each other's brains and, um, get to some college opens and, and, uh, see where, where he ends up. So super excited for him and, and the opportunity, you know, that, that this is kind of becoming. Yeah, that's cool. I think that that's going to become a much more popular thing. Um, mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, uh, that is, it, it could be so beneficial. You know, I would welcome anybody who, uh, who was interested, especially around my weight that wanted to, uh, to, to, to spend a year, uh, really committed to some training like that. And I know some mm -hmm. kids are, you know, giving up their, their, whether they're giving up their last year or they're just moving and doing their last year close to some of these colleges already. Yep. So, um, yeah, stuff like that's going to really, uh, start to evolve and, and happen a little bit more. Um, so, so Eric, so just a little, you know, we've talked about this show, right? We want to kind of get an opportunity to talk about college wrestling. You're fresh out yeah. of college wrestling, but, yeah. um, you know, so the goal is to just talk about college wrestling and what's going on from week to week, upcoming, uh, dual meets, latest results, rankings, um, and then maybe even give us, uh, give the people some predictions as to who we think, uh, is is favored to uh to win in a dual meet or or a tournament and stuff like that yeah um so i thought it'd be fun but um you know recently there's been uh, a few different um like wrestling cards coming up and you know there's been conversation about this but i thought it would be a good thing to kind of open up into college wrestling and, and and talking about you know that college wrestling is the pro league of of wrestling right yep. it's 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 the you know it's the one thing that we all have um kind of our attention on and it has the biggest fan base right and and you wrestled into in front of some big crowds um mm -hmm. you know just a test you know just talk about the experience of you know collegiate wrestling and and the exposure that you you got while you wrestled through there yeah man i mean you know it's given me a lot of opportunity being able to wrestle in big crowds and meet a lot of people through it um to your point i mean folks are wrestling yeah college is is the uh epitome of greatness i mean that is the highest level you can get in folk style wrestling is the collegiate level um you know i i think it's interesting uh you know when i go to went, went to college was there for five years and uh there's there's a next level for a lot of these guys to get to in terms of you know football basketball some of these different sports and the the disparity between uh levels is is pretty large um in college for a lot of these sports whereas like wrestling i, I feel like we're continuing to build that parity um you know we could talk about nil being uh a part of that 
um, or a lack thereof. You know, we can debate on that. But um, I think that, you know, it's a huge, huge way to get names out there, get programs on the rise, being able to get in front of these crowds. You know, the NCAA tournament, I don't know what the numbers um, show for attendance, but I, I would be confident in saying that they're above what the world championship attendance is. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a pretty, pretty huge event every year. I know growing up, you know, even in high school, I didn't do a lot of learning when the NCAA tournament was happening. Like kids are paying attention. Parents are paying attention. Um, whether they show up or not, right. The numbers, uh, need to continue to rise, but yeah, it's a, you know, good marketing tool as well for kids, you know, with the, with the NIL going on. Yeah. So the, obviously the NIL name image likeness gives the athletes to really take advantage of the brand um, individual brand recognition of themselves, but also when they're at that brand, whether it's Iowa, Wisconsin, Oklahoma state or so on and so forth. And, you know, I was thinking recently just about this concept of like the, the European soccer league, how they, how they have, you know, the developmental, well, they don't have developmental leagues. They have lower leagues and they can win and get themselves up to the higher leagues. And so a lot of people are kind of a little frustrated about the po possibility that the NIL space might um, pluck kids from the smaller programs to the bigger programs. But mm -hmm. when you think about it like a, a tier system, you know, a kid could go to the division three level right now, really develop because they, you know, maybe they just didn't have the opportunities. Maybe they didn't have the exposure. Maybe they just weren't as good at that level, but they get right. themselves to a position where now they can jump to the next league. And obviously that league could be, you know, maybe it's the, uh, the Mac conference, or maybe it's the, mm -hmm. um, Pac-12, or then, you know, obviously you're jumping leagues and getting up to, you know, the, the higher league, like the big 10 conference. So, yeah. um, it is interesting to think about because we have this, this model that's existing and athletes have the, the ability to, to come, you know, um, to go through it and really take right. advantage of it. So I, I think it's cool. And there's a free agency to it. You know, I was looking at, I was watching how, you know, why is football so popular? Like, well, you know, the media that happens on the outside of the the games and stuff is always mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, this last week was Devonte Adams going to the Jets from uh, the Raiders. Like that team's not even in contention to win a Super Bowl, but there's a conversation around the trade right. component right. that that college wrestling now kind of has. Right. And so I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. And I think yeah. the more we embrace the, the opportunity for, you know, again, Kyle Snyder's training at Penn state right now. Mm -hmm. Well, what if in college he, you know, got a, uh, a pay raise or an, a newer opportunity to go from Ohio state to Penn state. Yeah. And it's just, that's just, uh, uh something about, um, college wrestling, but yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it just raises opportunities too. I mean, you, you storylines drive anything, right? You're looking at, you know, like your, your example of, you know, the jets, right. They're two and five, not a very good team this year. Um, but people are still paying attention and following same thing with the, the programs that haven't seen as much success um, yet in collegiate wrestling there's a ton of opportunity and, and just utilizing the marketing teams and, and uh, all the platforms to utilize um, the, the names that you guys get coming in, uh, really blow it up, you know, utilize, you know, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram are your best friends. If you're a, a smaller division one program to be able to get your name out there, be unique and create more opportunity for your guys. Yeah. I would agree. And I think, you know, we're seeing some people do a really good job of that and other people um, maybe just be upset that it's not that simple to do. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of have to um, reinvent yourself as far as a, a coach or, or a leader of a program. It's not just, just as simple as wrestling. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's a dynamic uh, position to hold at the top of that, 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 that hierarchy. So Yep. Cool. Anyways, let's uh, let's transition. So talking about uh, college wrestling, um, you know, I thought it would be good. You know, nothing's really happened. I think the season has officially started as far as like practice stuff has, yep. has happened. Um, but nothing obviously has happened from 
the standpoint of competitions. So all we can do right now is speculate uh, on some of the the um, things that are going to happen. So you know, I thought you know we could start with uh, with one of the previews of the Big Ten Conference, right? Okay. So um, lots gone on since last season. Uh, you were wrestling in the Big Ten Conference at Wisconsin, so you kind of know um, some of the the landscape. Um, yep. What are your initial thoughts about your your Badgers? You know, this year they're coming off kind of losing some really good wrestlers. They lost you as a senior, and then they lost uh, DJ Hamidi, who who went to Oklahoma State. But um, they're also getting back uh, Braxton Amos. Um, mm-hmm. So how do you think, uh, just with your alma mater? Yeah, no, I think it's going to be a year. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of learning that needs to happen uh, for the young guys. It's a young team. Um, that's why I loved it last year. I was a resource for a lot of young guys um, and to be able to lead by example. Um, you know, I know, you know, Bono Reader, uh, Tony Cassiope is now coaching there and then Garrett Model. They're going to be resources to lead these guys um, into battle and create opportunities right there. You know, whether they're, um, down and out on, on the, the spreadsheet or, you know, on paper, if they're looking like they, they might lose a duel, right. They're still going to show up and fight. I know, I know that for sure. Um, you know, in terms of where we've been before, it's definitely a down year for them. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count them out. There's one guy in particular, um, actually two that I want to shout out, uh, Nicola Rivera, uh, think he's going to do very well this year at 25, um, dropping down. It's his natural weight. Um, he was a small 33 last year. I think he'll do really well. Super scrappy guy, super strong and athletic uh, wrestler and very, very creative. And then Zan Fugit, um, tough guy, uh, real, real hard hand fighter and, and another creative guy that I think can do uh, really, really well this year. So got some young talent in the room. I'm going to, you know, work through through some of the kinks and make sure that, you know, I, I know one thing for sure is that they're going to be looking to to peak in March and make sure that that is uh, front in mind for them. Yeah, well, I'll be headed up there a few times to see some of the uh, progress. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to um, seeing how they respond because being young is also a good thing because they have less to lose. They have less stress. Um so they can really start to, to, to step into it. Well, let's go to, uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, yep. but stepping into the, the rest of the Big Ten Conference. Um, these are the results from last year. Uh, Penn State uh, won uh, pretty substantially by 50, almost 50 points over Michigan um, and Nebraska, then Iowa. Now, Ohio State, I know, was pretty um, – they were down. I don't know. I think they had some injuries, and a couple guys um, were freshmen into the lineup. So they're going to be a little bit better this year. Um, mm-hmm. Any individuals stand out? I know you you have a little bit more of an insight of who's wrestling, uh, especially at the lighter weights. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously Mendez coming back for Ohio State. You know, that's where, um, in terms of the Big Ten championship, you know. Penn State, you know, wins by 47 points. Ohio State takes fifth. Not sure exactly the results and, and how it panned out at the NCAA tournament, but when you have heavy hitters that can go win a national title for you, you're always in, in contention to uh, get a team trophy, too, at nationals. Um, you know, Penn State is Penn State, right? They're the, you know, very, very tough program. And, you know, not only do they recruit very well, but they produce and develop very well. Um, having guys filling in the lineup, you know, Cassick last year bumped up to 49, was a backup at 41 until an injury happened. Um, so much depth in that room and the ability to develop uh, at a you know fast clip um, allows for Penn State to continue to be ahead of the rest of the pack. Um, it's going to be a dogfight for, for Iowa this year. Some guys moving around, a lot of graduates. A um, couple guys uh, transferred out. Um, so interested to see how they shape up in terms of, you know, putting in a, a tough lineup for them. Um, I know Ayala is bumping up to 33. 
Um, kind of surprised me there. I, I thought he would stay at 25, but um, yeah, I think they're going to be a tough team. Um, Michigan's going to be right in there. Ohio State's going to be in there. To your point, Ohio State, I think, um, will probably continue to climb up the ranks, especially this year, looking for that two or three spot in the Big Ten and probably not far from that two or three spot at, at the NCAA tournament with some of those guys getting older, um, you know, getting better, guys graduating, weight classes opening up a little bit and creating opportunity for their guys to slip in and do really well. Yeah, and uh, what, what do you know about um, Minnesota's lineup? Now, Minnesota's been a, a team that's been – you know, super uh, dominant over the last, you know, couple decades yep. of wrestling. But, you know, the last couple of years, they've kind of stayed out of the, you know, the main uh, pack of, of leaders. Like, um, do they have a lineup that, that is going to be able to kind of find them, their way to the top? Um, they're, I want to say they're a young team too. I mean, I know they got some Wisconsin boys that went there as well that that'll be in the lineup. Um, I know Blaine Brenner was wrestling for them at 65, expecting him to continue to take leaps um, and continue to develop and grow. Um, I, I think they're a young team. I don't think that they can get up into that higher tier quite yet. Uh, you know, the loss of Brandvold as a coach too um, doesn't help. Um, re really good coach, really good dude. And um, yeah, I, I just don't see Minnesota being up in that higher tier um, in terms of putting together uh, tournaments. They don't really have any like heavy hitters that are going to go, you know, contend for a national title. Um, and I could be, you know, missing a guy or two, but um, off the top of my head, you know, Pat McKee's out. Um, Salazar, I believe, graduated. Obviously, Gable's been gone. You know, I don't, I don't see. Uh, an individual in that lineup that's going to go contend for a title and score 20 team points for them at the NCAA tournament. So definitely would put them in that tier below Michigan, Ohio state, Iowa, and Penn state. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it looks like there's a few guys, but you know, those, those other teams have some, some um, firepower. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned. Um, yeah. So who, who's your, who's maybe, um, your favorite uh, Big Ten wrestler that comes to mind? That's a great question. That's a great question. I can tell you mine. I, I'll say, yeah, you, you know, you, you mentioned, yeah, you, so you mentioned him before. And, um, you know, I, I remember coming up and watching uh, the Wisconsin duel versus Ohio State. And I saw Jesse Mendez hit a shot that was so fast and so smooth. And I was like, this kid is unbelievably talented. Mm -hmm. Um, so off the top of my head, I think I love watching uh, Jesse Mendez. Obviously, second that comes to mind is um, um, the the uh, fifty seven pounder for Penn State um, or sixty five pounder Haynes. Yeah, Haynes. He yep. looks like he's seventy four now this year. So yeah, seven, Haynes, so between Haynes and and Mendez, those are two individuals that I just enjoy watching compete. Yep. Um, at a high level so those are yeah my yeah i like uh I couldn't, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even pick one so <laughs> yeah right right it's tough i mean these dudes are getting these dudes are getting good and and uh wrestling is continuing to progress at a, at a pretty fast clip um you know with the higher level wrestling guys graduate become coaches feed back into their communities you know the the progress we're making as a sport in terms of uh scrambling abilities technique um and being able to compete and keeping our composure head on straight with the you know the mental side of wrestling continues to develop but one i think my favorite wrestler in the big 10 to watch is shane van ness um super good hand fighter absolutely love the pace that he he puts on guys and um I'm not going to say he's not like a creative wrestler, um, but I, the reason I enjoy watching him so much is his heavy hands. He's going to gas guys out, and um, he showed that too going down late in, or going down, uh, you know, big early in matches and coming back and just beating guys up and getting them tired and making them quit. Um, that's that old school, you know, uh, 
seven hard minutes kind of brand mentality with, you know, the creative side of, uh, of Penn state wrestling. So Shane Van Ness is a guy too bouncing back from a, I want to say ACL tear coming back and super excited to see what he does this year. Yeah, he is. He is definitely fun to watch. Penn state always has uh, some, some great um, offensive wrestlers um, to watch. So um, yeah, awesome. Big 10. Obviously we could talk for days on the big 10. There's, there's no shortage of, of athletes and, and team storylines to talk about, but a good transition would be uh, going to the big 12 talking about uh, what's changed. You know, uh, again, we mentioned it earlier, DJ Hamidi from Wisconsin transfers to Oklahoma state. And then a couple months later, David Taylor becomes the head coach at Oklahoma state and kind of is starting to, um, change everything right now. When you yep. change everything, I'm saying, you know, uh, and, um, Amin from Michigan has transferred out there. Um, yep. obviously they already have guys like Dustin plot, um, and, uh, Bradley 25. So they have a team that's really looking like they can kind of make a run. Um, For sure. not sure if they can make a run to the top, but I definitely like their team in dual meets and mm -hmm. uh, a tournament. Um, so just talking about Oklahoma state and, and what do you see for them? And are they the favorites in the big 12 conference? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Favorites in the big 12. Um, I think they're the second best team in the country um, outside of Penn state. And, you know, I, I think that they're two, three years um, away from truly contending with Penn state um, and looking to, you know, kind of end that dynasty in a way. And, uh, you know, with the, I, I think that the way they're going about it is so strategic and smart building their RTC and the cowboy wrestling club, um, getting guys in, they just got Sahid Valencia and they got RBY. Um, some of those guys that are still competing at a very high level in freestyle, Dayton Fix is obviously, obviously there as well. Coach of, you know, uh, Gilman and uh, Jimmy Kennedy, you know, these guys being able to feed into the program, um, give back. And, you know, I think a guy like Troy Spratley, uh, I want to say his blood round last year, expect him to be on the podium, right? He's got RBY, Fix, and Gilman as practice partners. Like, I don't think he could be in a, a better situation to look to even contend for a title. Um, you know, DJ obviously is a heavy hitter. Um, expect high things out of him. You know, my I wouldn't be shocked at all. You know, I honestly expect a national title from him. Um, think he's that high of a level guy. Um, and in the room that he's in, getting to wrestle with Kennedy, Taylor, Plot, now is a heat coming in the room. I mean, they have opportunities to develop. Right on paper, they already have a star-studded lineup, but to be able to progress through the through the season, um, you know, Penn State has showed that that they know how to peak in March, and with you know the new coaching staff, half of them coming from or spent a good chunk of time, you know, at in in Happy Valley, I think they're they're going to be good to go and um, be continuing to develop throughout the year. Yeah, I think uh, like what you said about, you know, 125 and uh, Hamidi, like specifically 125 with a guy like Spratley, like how much of a jump do you think a guy can make um, just by uh, having a consistent practice partner um, like Gilman? Like what do you think the the turnover of, you know, he's pretty good, but now he's great or really contending for a national title. And obviously he was really good. I, I, I did you get a chance to wrestle with him the last couple of years? Never, never wrestled him. Um, I want to say he lost to Ayala, maybe the match before I would have wrestled him at nationals. Um, we never dueled him. Um, honestly, didn't really watch a ton of film on him ever because never had a lineup, you know, across from him. Um, scrappy kid. Um, I know he's, you know, that, that old school Oklahoma state, uh, low level tax. Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of where he's at last year, finishing in the blood round to where he can go this year, um, knowing nothing really about the kid, just a situation in general, assuming that he's soaking it all in doing the right things, handling his weight, how he should. Um, I, I think it's going to be, a whole different beast that, that people are lining up across. 
I would imagine a whole lot more offensive um, and just better positionally understanding, you know, fix and RB wire two drastically different styles. And then you got, you know, Gilman, that's just going to hand fight you and, and be super solid. So he's got three different styles of elite level wrestling to pick the brains of and develop into it, move those things and, and take those things into his own style. So I think it's, you know, truly he could be a title contender at 25. Um, just being in that room from, you know, last season to this season. Yeah. And not to mention like the, the 125 pound weight class is kind of like a, like a tornado, right? Like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. last year, um, the Arizona state wrestler, uh, wasn't really in the title contention for most of the year. Um, I know you were, uh, the, at the top, uh, or two, one or two, what two, were you, yeah. what was your highest seed two. last year? You were yep. two for, for a significant period of time. So the, you know, the Nebraska kid, Caleb Smith, I love watching him wrestle. You guys had a, a tremendous match last mm-hmm. year. Um, so it's just so much of a, a, you know, small window of opportunity where it can change the match. So um, yep. it's really uh, going to be an interesting uh, addition to see, see how he sure. adjusts coming into this year. Mm-hmm. Um, let's take a look at, at another um, um Another one of those teams um, in the Big 12 Conference is Iowa State. And last year, you know, I remember they had a really good showing. They almost beat Iowa in the duel. They came down to maybe maybe a bad decision from the coaching staff to, to wrestle on the edge somewhere. Um, but Iowa State made a, a big jump. Like, um, And I know they've gotten some, some other guys coming in. Um, yeah, what do you think about them and – you know, or you know, that's got to be a good, good close duel or a good close tournament. And not to mention, uh, was it North, North Dakota State or South Dakota State got all the transfers? I think South Dakota State. So. South Dakota State. Yep, yeah, they got both uh, the Seabrex from Iowa and and got those boys. So they'll yeah. be good additions for them as well. Yeah. So Iowa State. Sorry. Yeah. No. I. I mean, I think they're they're up there. They're I would consider them in that that higher tier tier of wrestling. Um, Dresser does a really good job there, getting his guys to be be bought in um, for the most part and uh, leading that team. Um, they do, you know, I think they do a really good job there. You can tell, um, you know, watching if you watch one one of their guys wrestle, you can almost scout another one of their guys just on the areas that they focus on. Um, single leg position was one area where I, I saw they all finished exactly the same. Um, you know, that, that's just good coaching and, and being able to have you guys bought into the same technique. Um, you know, the loss of, of car, um, you know, is big, big to have that heavy hitter, um, you know, won a national title, you know, 20, 25 team points there you're losing out on, um, goes a long way, but I know, uh, you know, Terakima is bumping up a weight class. I um, think the weight cut got to be a bit much for him throughout the year. You saw him doing really good. And, you know, you know, I saw this personally. Saw him do really well in November and December. And then slowly kind of, um, I think that weight cut might have been too much for him. Um, but to see him bumping up a weight class, I think, you know, this might be a guy who super scrappy, pretty technical, but is also going to be, um, you know, hard hand fighter um, and can kind of pace guys being in a weight class that he's not, you know, cutting a ton of weight, being able to manage himself a little bit better um, might be a guy that, you know, could be on the podium, a guy that's going to score NCAA points, you know, as well as, you know, some of their transfer that transfers that came in, uh, you know, being able to score points for them. Um, and then 57 pounder blanking on his name, but um, super, super tough kid. Um, I think he can, um, is he 49 or 57? Well, uh, I was going to jump in and ask. So, um, you know, according to Intermet, the 25 pounder Tara Keenan is still at listed at 25. You're, you're mm-hmm. suggesting he's going up to 33. Yeah. That's what I've seen. That's what I've and seen. That's the, Evan, Evan Frost was the listed 133 yep. and he was ranked as well. So, um, it looks like Echimendia is already going up. He wrestled okay. 41, I believe, because he wrestled um, Real Woods last year. So he's up yep. at 49, uh, 57. It says um, Pinero Johnson. So 
Um, maybe what you're alluding to is maybe the lineup is is still a, a lot unknown, and so we don't really yeah. know how to uh, match them up against um, other people. But yeah, no, that that's a good point too, and you know that might be something where if a lot of guys are changing weight classes, uh, it can go one of two ways. One, uh, guys don't feel into the weight enough to be contenders. Um, they can be up into that you know second tier of their weight class where they can compete um with most of the guys but when it comes to uh, a size battle a strength battle they might get beat there um or a lot of those guys are just cutting a ton of weight last year and, and weight won't be an issue for them this year and it might keep them healthier um allow them to you know compete for a lot longer and throughout the season be able to peak in march february march and you know do what what they set out to do so um i have no doubt in my mind that there'll be you know contending for that big 12 title uh think oklahoma state is you know a step uh, uh, ahead of them um but yeah definitely see them in top 10 for sure uh this year at the national tournament got it and uh yeah so let's transition you know uh big 12 um will be interesting as the season goes on to see see how that that pans out um going into mac conference uh mid-american conference um it looks like um, these are the teams listed last year's uh, conference tournament. Um, and I know these are some of the smaller schools, kind of like what we were talking about before. The, the leagues, you know, when you come down to this far, you, you get a little bit of a, of a different team, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of these kids that were doing well here seem to tend to move on to the bigger, bigger programs. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we got Northern Illinois. We got Ohio. Ohio University has a kid, I believe, at 157 pounds. Uh, Keller, uh, he's a junior. He's uh, currently ranked third on Intermat. Um, so that's uh, one to think about. I know Buffalo, they had a changing coaching staff, I believe. Um, and uh, Central Michigan is always tough, so um, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see their lineup. Um, yeah. I'm a little unfamiliar with any of the um, standout individuals who uh, who maybe uh, performed well last year, but um, do you have any? Yeah, I think the if he's a 41 or 49. I think 49 pounder for Ryder. I think he graduated, um, so their their heavy hitter was out. Um, Central Michigan also had a coaching change. So Ben Bennett's leading the the charge there for them. Um, seemed like uh, talking to uh, some of the guys there uh, went to high school with a, with a kid that went out to Central Michigan. Now he's at Wisconsin. Seems like those guys have bought into that program, um, like Ben a lot. Um, I think they're doing a good job there and and keeping the team together. Um, you know, I know coaching changes uh, for a lot of programs can cause a lot of uh, animosity and and tear guys apart, apart, create some clicks. Um, doesn't seem like that's the case over there. Would expect them to kind of lead the Mac again. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't think that they have very many guys graduating, um, keeping relatively close to the same lineup. Um, I know their 25 pounder um, was tough. Don't think he made the national tournament, um, but would expect him to be there this year. Um yeah, I know their 49 pounder is pretty tough as well. Um, but I know they're they're gonna do a good job developing guys and I would expect them again to to win the Mac. Yeah, and another uh individual who is in the Mac right now is the number two ranked 125 pounder, uh Noto, uh, Anthony right. Noto yeah. from Lock Haven. Um, did you, uh, did you wrestle him last year in the third place bout, right? Yep. Third place bout. Yep. Yeah. Kind of, kind of forgot about him. Yeah. He's a tough kid. Um, curious to see if he stays at 25 or, or jumps up to 33 or if he redshirts this year. Um, I'm sure we'll find out in the next month or two to see, you know, what he's doing, what his plan is. Um, transfer from, uh, NC state. Over to Lock Haven, um, you know, there were some hard feelings there for him, and he's doing really well. Um, very uh, controlled wrestler, um, very tight, 
not super offensive, but he holds really good position. Um, I'd expect that to be a thing that is going to start. He's going to get more offensive, um, working on some of those attacks against some of those, the, the higher level, uh, wrestlers. I know at NCAs, uh, people get very stingy and, um, create a lot of one, two point matches. Um, so I expect him to, you know, work on getting those takedowns early in matches, uh, pretty tough on top, um, solid on bottom. He's, you know, well-rounded wrestler, um, has a motor on him. So yeah, tough kid that definitely will be in contention for a title. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that 25 pound weight class is, is, uh, just an unknown. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of things can happen. Injuries obviously are, are very common, uh, with the lightweights they're moving around, um, rolling a lot, um, mm -hmm. things like that can happen. Uh, so yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Um, now we can go into the PAC 12 and the, um, ACC and I know the EIWA, but kind of like lumping them kind of together because, um, it gets a little confusing with some of the conference changes. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with some of the Pac-12 changes. Obviously, Arizona State now moved to uh, the Big 12 conference, so they're no longer mm -hmm. in the Pac-12. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think. I know Oregon. Um, yeah, I don't even have that listed as to the tournament. Um, the tournament itself, the pac 12 tournament. Oh, here it is. Um, so Little Rock, uh, Arkansas, mm -hmm. another team. Uh, Stanford is no longer in the Pac-12. So still kind of unsure how that's going to play out as far as the conference tournament, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. cause that was already only at, um, you know, six teams. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't really know. Do you know much about the conference uh, realignments of that? No, I, I think the anticipation is they're all going to the Big 12. I'm not sure if that's set in stone already or not. Um, something to I should probably pay more attention to. I know with you know college football, um, football kind of runs what the conference alignments kind of do and um, kind of seems like the Pac-12 is dead. Not sure if they're <laughs> even kicking anymore. So would expect all those teams to kind of absorb – into the big 12 um it's already a tough tournament i get you know tough for uh any of them to go to the mac um just based off of pure you know money i'm um, looking at travel costs to go you know a cal baptist type school to travel out to michigan go like central michigan rider in new jersey some of those schools and then vice versa them traveling out to california for one duel um interested to see what will happen there um but i know i mean with arizona state hopping in the big 12 it's also going to create uh make it a one a tougher conference also it's going to change the allocations too of you know how many bids each conference gets um would imagine big 10 and the big 12 are pretty much going to be um right in the same spot in terms of allocations uh heading into the ncaa tournament um, or I should say conference tournaments and then to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, and then just interested to see what, what that does to the Mac EIWA and, uh, the ACC as well. I know ACC is a small tournament. Uh, I want to say six teams there as well. So, um, that's kind of, uh, getting closer to a win or go home type situation. Yeah. Yes, it should be uh, interesting. The, the, the allocations and all that stuff, how that plays out throughout the season. Um, they don't really change too much about it each year. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it would be interesting to see how um, they could, you know, again, put, you know, what I would like to see just in general, maybe we can just transition into a general uh, conversation around college wrestling, how to how it could be improved a little bit. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times competition has been avoided. Like, you know, this topic <clears throat> gets brought up a lot because, you know, people go, why aren't they wrestling? Why aren't they wrestling? Because, of, mm -hmm. you know, they want to watch them wrestle. But in reality, you know, kids are injured. Kids are um, going through practices every day. They get banged up. You know, the Big 12 or the Big 10 um, season, competition season, is extremely tough. I mean, you're going to very difficult duels during the heart of winter um, when you're cutting weight all the time, like, 
you know, you, people don't realize how how uh, one one extra match is extremely um, you know negative potential. Like there's a lot of injuries that could happen. There's a lot of yep. things could go on. And obviously, we put so much emphasis on the NCAA tournament. Why would you want to risk all of that just for the spectators' enjoyment? Now, to make it more enjoyable for spectators, to create more um, parity or competition amongst the top earlier or more more consistent throughout the season, I do think that it would be interesting to have more NCAA type events like sprinkled throughout the season, and then yeah. dual meets, obviously. Um, you know, this is the big argument in all of college wrestling or in wrestling in general, what leads to um, more spectators, more fans and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I personally go back to what we talked about right in the beginning. The college brands are what leads to the the fandom. Right. So mm-hmm. obviously University of Iowa has a storied uh, wrestling career uh, or pass so they have they fill out the stadium um but outside of that you need to engage other fans within the college programs to fill the stadium so maybe northern illinois doesn't need to do as many duels as say iowa should duel Mm -hmm. because they're not going to generate the revenue they're not going to put in the production to create the now the production costs are going down so it might be more beneficial or just as easy to um to keep that um, happening. It just seems that it'd be nice if, you know, we had some bigger tournaments sprinkled throughout the season. Obviously, you know, you got, well, I don't want to, you know, the Midlands tournament used to be one of the biggest. It's kind of had up and down seasons. Sometimes it's good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, there's obviously always good competition. It's just not, the depth isn't always there. Um, Southern scuffle, the same, you know, Southern scuffle came out on, out and then all of a sudden it took away a lot of the competition from the midlands um Mm -hmm. las vegas seems to be a very uh, competitive tournament just because it's so early in the season a lot of people want to go to it yeah um so yeah what are your thoughts on like just the season and and how it could be a little bit more um yeah yeah i mean so to your point i mean the iowa penn state oklahoma state um, some of those programs that are going to pack their, their field houses and, uh, get huge turnouts, make good money on duels. Um, I think, you know, doing solo duels is good for them. Um, they can have, you know, six, seven, eight home duels a year where they're packing the stands, making good money, right. Feeding right back into the program, allowing them to do more in terms of recruiting, taking care of their wrestlers, um, providing more for them, also providing more for their fans and the entertainment that they're able to uh, provide. For the smaller programs, though, what I think would be better for them, especially looking at, like, look at the MAC conference, right? Uh, we went out to Ryder uh, last year, and, man, I, I don't know if there were, you know, 200 people in the stands, Um you know, same with we wrestled Drexel there. Uh, not not a ton of fans in the stands. I think one thing to to limit the cost of you know production to set up um, and all those back end things that instead of doing them one at a time for these programs, um, being able to do two or three duels in one day um, on a Saturday or a Sunday, having these teams come in, one it limits the amount of wins that they have to do. Two, it allows them to be in the same spot competing. And now you have, say you have uh, four teams at one event. Well, now you got fans from every single school, the fans of the program that's hosting it. They have more to watch, right? They don't have just their guys um, to go see. So they're the incentive to go and be in person for the duel um, becomes that much higher when you're able to provide more um, benefit for them. Um, and for them to fork out, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks, travel a couple hours and get the kids packed up and over to a duel um, makes a lot more sense to do it when you have two, three duels to watch for each individual team um, in terms of production, again, of cost, uh, paying people to set up and all those things that adds up 
Um, again, thinking of a program like Ohio, um, if they got to travel, you know, all, all the way to the East coast and back to central Michigan, um, you know, I know they're close, but, you know, traveling over to Kent state, some of those schools are even lock Haven. Um, they, when they have to continue to travel, it eats up the ability for them to provide for their athletes. So we're taking dollar signs away from programs and away from kids that we could be using in a more efficient manner, just because we want to have solo duels. And I think it, it's killing programs because fans don't want to just go see one duel. If it's Iowa versus Oklahoma State, sign me up. But I'm not I'm not traveling over to Ohio to watch Ohio and Kent State scrap. So if we can put them together and get more of the the heavy hitters, um, the the big guys that are going to contend for titles um, in in March, and put as many of them in one spot as you can for a duel or a couple of duels, I think that that can help those programs big time. Yeah. The, the idea of like a mega duel, you know, it's, it's obviously some, some, it does, you know, some college programs do it. I know I looked at like uh, Illinois uh, schedule. I think they have one that they go nice. out to Pennsylvania and they, they wrestle like three or four people. But I definitely think like what you're saying is, you know, more of a mega duel situation where you do have, you know, multiple things going on, kind of like a mini, um, you know, dual tournament, but you're yep. really just wrestling duels. Um, to your point, I think, it, like, I think I don't think people fully comprehend this is why I think the the head wrestling coach of Division One wrestling programs have to have multiple hats. They can't just come at it from a wrestling perspective of like, oh, we just want to get our guy, you know, a little tune up match so that he can, you know, progress towards um, the season. You know, you mm -hmm. kind of have to create events that, you know, ultimately turn into um you know, profit shares for the programs, mm -hmm. which then turns back into revenue for the program that could turn into NIL opportunities to, to build exactly. your small programs into, you know, competitive against the big programs. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that there should be some type of rule or adjustment that allows a, you know, big program like Iowa or Penn State to send a, I, I want to say a JV squad to some of these other programs to duel so that the exposure of the the program you know can one develop these younger athletes right so say mm -hmm. for instance there's a backup that is you know just as good but you know gets to go to wrestle some of these smaller programs puts a little bit bigger of a um you know view on it right but also mm -hmm. at the same time it doesn't go against any type of you know the varsity dual uh, record i guess whatever you do yep. um you know, because personally, I think that's one thing that's limiting college wrestling is like, you know, the big brands should go compete against the smaller brands. But if you're only going to put out, you know, your your number one lineup, maybe it's not even helpful for that, you know, Penn State to go wrestle, you know, Northern Illinois. But right. if, uh, if Northern Illinois and Penn State could could um, compete, you know, it, it's just it's, these are, you know, just ideas that I think um, yeah. could really emerge because, like you said, you have to you have to put more eyeballs on the smaller programs so that they can, you know, showcase the talent that they do have. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it's hard to do it if you do it in a traditional, um, like just one at a time tune up. Not, not to mention, I was thinking about that, just like how difficult it is for, you know, the lighter weight classes to, to, you know, lose weight for one dual meet. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a lot of, it's a big grind. I mean, you're talking like a four to five day process for, for a seven minute match. It, it yeah. uh, can be very taxing on the, the body and the mind. Um, yeah. and, and to be honest, even though that's part of the sport, it doesn't have to be part of the sport. Mm -hmm. um, we could just focus on the competitiveness of, of the, of the athlete. Um, so it's hard enough to lose weight. Uh, why not do it in a way where you're going to kind of get uh, the maximum output of that athletes potential so yep yep and you're creating realistic opportunities right the ncaa tournament you're putting out five six seven matches where in duels like it's not realistic for development throughout the season to make weight for one match and then you don't weigh in again for another week or two weeks like it, it just doesn't make sense um another idea you know i, I kind of thought of too is you know uh Penn State versus uh, Michigan dual, you know, in in Penn State, um, maybe putting a, you know, MAC 
uh, two teams dueling beforehand or something to create, you know, the offer the incentive to um, bring fans in early, watch a duel, stay there, um, watch a, you know, high level Big Ten duel, getting more eyes on programs. I think that's going to develop uh, and, and add to the parity that we can provide in, in college wrestling. The more opportunities we can create, more eyeballs we can get on these smaller programs, um, I think helps everybody. Um, the the big thing is getting rid of the ego um, that that some of the coaches have and saying, "Hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not showing up. I'm not the opening performance for Penn State versus Michigan. We're, you know, we want to win national titles too." I think that's where the expectations need to be realistic, like look at what Penn State's doing, like, you know, Ohio University, you know, I keep picking on them. Sorry, Ohio. Um, they did. <laughs> but, uh, like, they, they're realistically not contending with Penn State. Now, can they contend to win a MAC title? Absolutely. Um, and that's a huge, huge feat for a, a smaller program that doesn't get as much funding. Um, you're getting to the upper echelon of your own tier, and that's how we can get more eyeballs on you. Coaches have an opportunity to display what they can do as coaches, showing uh, you know a below 500 wrestler the next season um, if they're doing better and better and better. And you can show how you can develop guys as well at your smaller program. Um, just creates more parity, more opportunity, and, and allows these small programs to get eyeballs on them. Yeah, some good ideas there. I like it. Um, some yeah. We could go again uh, for a long time on that, but mm -hmm. um, we can finish up there. Eric, thanks for joining me. This was uh, a lot of fun to dive into college wrestling. I'm a huge fan of college wrestling. Obviously, you are a recent retired competitor of college <laughs> wrestling, yep. um, and uh, it's uh, a, it was a lot of fun to, to chat about the upcoming sure. season, and uh, I look forward to uh, the next one. Awesome. Sounds good.